Welcome back, everyone, to our lecture series based upon the textbook Linear Algebra Done Openly. As usual, I am your professor today, Dr. Andrew Misseldine. It's great to have you. Uh, today, we're in section 5.2 of chapter 5 about determinants. And in particular, we're going to talk about some properties of determinants. Um, the determinant is a function from matrices to scalars. That is, given a square matrix, you'll give you back a scalar. And as the set of matrices is a vector space, and the set of scalars is also a vector space, a one-dimensional vector space, mind you, but a vector space nonetheless, um, it makes sense to sort of ask the question, oh, is the determinant map a linear transformation? Seems like everything else has been, right? Uh, matrix transposition is linear. The trace map is linear. Uh, all these other things seem like everything's linear, right? Um, what can we say about the determinant? Well, the determinant's not actually linear, but it's something related to that, uh, something we call multilinear. And so let me kind of talk about that um, and explain exactly what that means. So suppose we have two vector spaces, V and W, and they have the same set of scalars over the field F. And if we take a map, a linear map between V and W, what that means is it's, it's a map that preserves the vector operations, the linear operations. So we're looking for maps that preserve vector addition. That is, the image of a sum is the same thing as the sum of the images. And it also preserves scalar multiplication. That is, the image of a scalar multiple is a scalar multiple of an image. It doesn't matter whether we scale uh, after or before the transformation, we get the same thing. And it doesn't matter whether we add after the transformation or add before the transformation, we get the same thing. That's a linear transformation. So what does it mean to, uh, what, what, what about determinants, right? Uh, well, let's let's form a new vector space we're going to call Vn, where n is any natural number. That could be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, any positive integer. Uh, we define Vn to be the set of all list of size n. Uh, so we have this n list. Uh, V1, V2, up to Vn. These are vectors that live inside the vector space v and so we're just taking a list of vectors that's that's all we mean right here um this itself makes a vector space and in fact the dimension of vn is just n times uh the dimension of v uh so basically we're just taking n copies of a vector space that already exist and uh, we're making a new vector space like that and in terms of addition what you do is if you had two tuples like this, V1, V2 up to Vn, and there's like a W1, W2 up to Wn. Well, in terms of addition, you'll just add together component-wise. In terms of scalar multiplication, you would just distribute the scalar onto everything and then do scalar multiplication in the vector space. We can make a vector space out of multiples of a vector space. And in fact, we've already been doing this along, along the way. Like if we take the vector space V to be the, 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 the column vectors F, M, then in fact, V to the N is going to be the vector space F to the M by N. That is, it's the space of all M by N matrices. And so V N is just a vector, it's just a matrix, uh, a matrix space, which is itself a vector space, right? Uh, and so the reason we, we introduce that notation is that's how one describes a, a, what we call a multi linear map. So we have two vector spaces, V and W, uh, over the same field, F. And so again, pick your favorite natural number, N, so we can talk about V to the N. Uh, we say that a map is multilinear. Um, it's a map B from VN to W. So we have a list of N vectors as our input, and we have an output here, W. So what I want you to think about this is that we think of we have like in input variables, right? This is something that often is discussed in like multivariable calculus. Single variable calculus focuses on one variable in, one variable out. Multivariable calculus might have multiple variables in and multiple variables out. Um, and so this is a situation where we're taking in variables into the function and we output a single function. So we could think of this as like a multi, a multivariant function right now. We take n vectors into uh, the machine and then it outputs a single vector. So think of this as a multivariant vector function. Well, if it's multivariant, we can say it's multilinear if for some fixed choice i, 
uh, what we're going to do is we, we take vectors v1, v2, up to vn. So we have all these n vectors, v1, v2, up to vn. And so the transformation where you take x and you map it here to this list, uh, this should be a b right there. Sorry about that. x uh, maps to b of v1, v2, up to vi minus 1, x vi plus one up to vn. So you'll notice that the vector vi did not show up in this list. We actually mapped x to the ith position, like so. Um, we mapped x to the ith position. Then we had this fixed list of vectors that filled in all the other spots. Uh, if this is a linear transformation, so, so say that again, um, the, 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 the multivariant function B is multilinear if for each I and each choice of vectors, V1, V2, up to Vn, the function X mapping to B of V1, V2, all the way up to Vn, except that Vi, there was no Vi, there was just an X, that this is a linear map. That can be really difficult to take in right here. Um, the, the way we try to say this is that uh, multilinear... Well, let's say it this way. Um, we say that a map is linear. It's linear in the ith position. It's linear in the ith position exactly when this condition happens. Uh, it's, it's linear when... When this thing happens right here. That is, you fix... Uh, you, you fix everything except for the ith variable, and it's linear in that variable. So all, uh, all positions are fixed all positions are fixed except the ith position. And then it'll be linear in that perspective. Um, and so then things are multilinear. They're multilinear if it is linear in all variables. That's a slightly different way of defining this thing. And that one might be a little bit more uh, dissect, uh, di digestible there. Um, we say that a map is bilinear if it is multilinear with two variables. And we've seen some examples of these in the past. Uh, so for example, the dot product on Rn is an example of a bilinear map. Uh, because if we take any if we take any vectors u, v, and w, so here w is fixed. Well then by properties of the dot product we can distribute w onto this and so we end up with u dot w and v dot w and so this would this preserves addition in the first coordinate and likewise if you take cu dot v this is the same thing as cu v so if we take all of this stuff together whoops uh, this equality and this equality tells us that the dot product is linear it's linear in the first uh, the first factor. But then let's come over to the second one here. If you fix... If you fix the first coordinate, u, and then when you distribute it over a sum, uh, that gives you that u dot v plus w is equal to u dot v plus u dot w. Um, and so that tells you that in the second factor, addition is preserved. And likewise, u dot cv is equal to c times u dot v. So the dot product, it, dis it preserves scalar multiplication in the second factor. It preserves vector addition in the first factor. And so these things tell us that the dot product is linear in the second factor. And since it's, it's linear in the first factor and in the second factor, um, we say it's a bilinear map. All right, and so this is the dot product on the real numbers. Um, the 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 Hermitian product on 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 complex numbers is not exactly bilinear. Um, it does preserve addition in the first and second factor. It does preserve um, scalar multiplication in the second factor, but it doesn't exactly preserve scalar multiplication in the first factor. Uh, the issue is for complex numbers, 
if you had something of the form c u dot v, this is actually equal to the complex conjugate of u dot v, which was not necessarily the original scalar if that was a if that was a non-real number. And so we don't actually say the Hermitian product is um, multilinear or bilinear here. It's often referred to as being sesquilinear. Uh, sesquilinear means if you look at the if you look at the derivation of the word there, sesqua means like one and a half. So it's not bilinear, but it's more than linear. So it's one and a half linear. We call it sesquilinear. Uh, we're not going to worry about that too much in this context. Uh, I just want to present some examples of bilinear maps and and before we talk about the derivative, um, the tensor product or the so-called outer product we talked about before is likewise a bilinear map. If we look at real numbers. Rn times Rn. Uh, this is this is a bilinear map for the same reason that the dot product was because uh, because of the first one right here, it's going to preserve addition in the second and the first factor. It preserves scalar multiplication in the, in the second factor, so it's going to be linear. It's linear in the first factor, but likewise, if you look at the second factor. Um, it distributes u times u pl v plus w is equal to u tensor v plus u tensor w. And likewise, um, in the second factor, scalar multiplication is preserved. So it's linear. It's linear in the second factor as well. And so putting this together, we see that the tensor product is bilinear. Again, this is this outer product is bilinear for real numbers. Um, it's only sesquilinear for uh, complex numbers uh, because again, um, it'll preserve addition in the first and second factor. It'll preserve scalar multiplication in the first factor, but it, it, you take conjugate scalars in the second factor. Um, so it's only gives you sesquilinear again. All right, so, so really what I want to talk about in this chapter is determinants. Determinants are not linear transformations because uh, we have the following issue, right? If you take the determinant of A plus B, this is not in general the same thing as the determinant of A plus the determinant of B. You can't just add determinants and get the determinant of the sum of matrices. Uh, so it's not a linear map because it doesn't preserve addition in terms of matrices. It doesn't preserve matrix addition, but it is multilinear if we think of if we think of a matrix as a list of column vectors, uh, so in, in terms of that regard, um, but we all, it's also true that the determinant of A is equal to the determinant of transpose of A. Uh, this comes from the Laplace cofactor expansions that we had talked about in the previous lecture, uh, that expansion, because if you, you can expand across any row or any column, well, if you take the transpose, expanding across a column is the same thing as expanding across a row. So the determinant is not affected by the transposition operation. And so this the, the determinant map is multilinear if we think of the column vectors, because a matrix is a list of column vectors. But it's also multilinear if you think of it as a list of row vectors. So we actually get that freedom in doing that. And so since it's multilinear, what that means is it'll preserve addition if all but one row is fixed. So it preserves it preserves addition if all but one row or column is fixed. Or in other words, if we have matrices A, B, and C, which they're both, they're all three of them are N by N matrices, if they only differ in a single row, say the rth row, and uh, assume that the rth row of C is obtained by adding the corresponding entries in the rth row of A and B, in that context, then you'll get that the determinant of C is equal to the determinant of A plus the determinant of B. I'll show you an example of this on the next slide in just a second. Um, likewise, if a and B are matrices that differ only in a single row, so all, have, all the other rows are fixed, and assume that, and that, let's say that the, the, the differing row is the rth row, and assume that the rth row of B is obtained by scaling the corresponding entries in the rth row of A by some scalar C, then we can factor that C out of the row. So when it comes to determinants, we don't factor the scalar out of the matrix, we factor, we factor scalars out of a single row. 
not out of the whole matrix. So let me show you how that might work. Uh, so for example, if we have these two matrices right here, so there are three by three matrices, you see you have a, five, a four, a five, a zero. So the first row is identical. Uh, the second row, three, negative one, two, those are identical. And so the, the first rows are the same, the second rows are the same, but the third rows do differ. We get a one, two, three for the one, and we get zero, four, negative two for the other. So the multilinearity of the determinant tells us that we can add together the third row, leaving the first two rows fixed. The first two rows here are fixed. You can add together the third row, so you get one plus zero, two plus four, and three minus negative one there. So the sum of these two determinants will be the same as the determinant of four, five, zero, three, negative one, two, and then one, six, and one. And I'll let you verify this fact on your own if you want to. Pause the video right now if you need to. But the determinant of this matrix right here will equal the sum of these two determinants right there. All right. Um, and so this property of determinants allows us to calculate determinants if this is helpful to us whatsoever. Also, when you look at this, this matrix right here, you'll notice that the second row, everything's divisible by two. You have a four, six, and eight. You can factor that two out of the row and it gets in front of the whole matrix. You don't factor the scalars out of the whole matrix, but individual rows. That's how it affects the determinant. Honestly, this first one, multilinearity of rows, we're not going to use that one so much. It's kind of it's okay, but we're not going to use it that much in calculations. But multilinear of, scal of scalars, we're going to use this one all the time. 